Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mark White, I'm the project uh, developer, lead on uh, Southampton Vampire by Night. Um, it's an upcoming LARP system that's due to launch in 2020. Now as this video is titled, this is the uh, the truth bomb, uh, the, the actual truth behind what it is that what it takes to make a LARP. Um, so a lot of this stuff I've learned, you know, just I've tried it and it's it's quite an eye opener. Um, so first is first, you know, first things first. Um, I find it incredibly difficult um, doing these videos. Uh, I suffer from crippling um, self confidence uh, in a lot of things I do, uh, and also I'm a little bit of a perfectionist in that. If I'm going to do something, I want to do it right. Um, so in creating these videos, um, even when it's you know live on Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy task for me. Um, so one of the other things was recently I did an interview uh, and then after listening back to the interview the sound quality was, wasn't was great uh, and it was devastating for me because um, I was you know, trying to advertise the, the LARP and it was uh, being shown to quite a few people and then after that it was like oh no. Um, but that's one of the things you've got to kind of like take on the chin um, is that you're going to make mistakes. Um, so, throughout the development, um, I've made loads of mistakes. Um, the planning, where I budgeted, um, you know, and stuff like that. And it, it, it haunts you, but you've got to kind of like move on. Um, so that's like lesson number one is um, don't dwell on the things that haven't gone your way. Um, just learn from them and try not to do the same mistake again. So, you know, an example of I've just given, I'll make sure my sound quality is 100% before you know going live or something like that. Um, what else is there? So let's talk about one of the most awkward things for me, and that is that I'm an incredibly honest person. Um, I like to tell people you know exactly what I think and stuff like that, and 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 try and do it in a polite way. But um, you know, so that honesty has been something that has just been kind of like raised in me. So. It's been incredibly hard uh, giving like development videos and stuff like that and keeping that kind of upbeat face at times when, um, you know, things don't go to plan. Um, so that's why I decided to make this, is to kind of like give you the insight from what's going on behind the scenes. So for example, every time I've been saying um, our team, our development team is doing this and stuff like that, um, the development team at one point uh, just went down to myself. It has been for some time. Um, so the website, getting that finalised, the organising the photo shoots, the um, you know, getting the scripts for the voice actor, um, you know, things like that, have all kind of been done by myself. Um, originally, we started out with a team of five. And as we've been going on, due to basically real life issues, um, you know, the team's been in and out, if you see what I mean. But nobody's been able to really commit. Um, and that was something that always played on my mind in that, um, you know, I started this as a group because, you know, it was going to be fun. Um, we're all going to have a good time making it. We had big ambitions and stuff like that. And where it's kind of like landed in my lap and I'm not someone to let go of something. Um, if I start something, I see it to the end. So no matter how this video comes across, um, this project will happen. Um, how it comes out at the end may be different to how it was advertised at the start, but you know I'm not going to let this go until you know until we kind of finish it. Um, so yeah, it's you basically you can only really rely on yourself, um, and that's that's something that's hard for me to kind of you know uh, I don't know. Uh, hard for me to accept in that when someone has said they were going to do something and then they were unable to do it or um, something else came up or it was a lower priority to other things I was counting on that and then when it didn't happen it was a, it was a big blow because I knew that you know, I've got to do it now and I've already got all these other things I'm doing in the project and it just mounts up and mounts up and mounts up and you know it's overwhelming and uh, so and at the same time you've got to keep that professional attitude and you don't want to lose friends over it so 
Uh, that's been difficult. At the start, it was horrendous. Um, I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to take it. I took everything as a personal slight. I thought that people were doing it um, to get to me or something like that. And then when you actually look back at it, it's not. It's just that you know, people have other commitments in their life um, and things come up. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, this this may be a really high priority for me, but it may not be as high priority for them. And that's perfectly acceptable. And that's something as a developer you have to learn very quickly. That it's your baby, it's it's your it's your passion. Um, so you can't expect everybody else to share that same passion that you do. Um, and nobody wants to hurry. Uh, well, maybe they do. I don't know, but I don't think I don't think that is the case. I think it is just, as I've said, you know, things have come up. Um, so that is something so important to remember: is that whatever you're doing, try not to lose friends over it. Try not to alienate people or make people feel uncomfortable. If somebody said they're going to do something, anyone able to do it, so be it. You know, just move on and try and try and figure out a way of getting through it. Um, so that is something that that was, as I say, a lesson learned. Um, where else has there been? Oh God, community. So I've started this with uh, the attitude of it's a community project, it's for everybody. Um, it's a lot being made to cater for as many people as I possibly can. Um, you know, I, I was stretching the imagination with how I can incorporate as many aspects so that way, you know, as many people as possible can get involved in it. Um, that was streamlined down to geocaching, play by mail, and the live game. Now, the geocaching was is going to be used as a way to advertise the game and also to hit a different demographic that don't normally associate with LARP or RPGs and stuff like that. So it, that was the idea behind it. So we could actually advertise a game in a creative way because you know you need advertisement um, to draw in people that don't don't know me, don't know Vampire LARP and all that. You need to be able to reach them in a in a way that's engaging, and that's what that website was for, and that's what the geocaching about. Um, after a chat with a certain individuals in a pub the other night, um, that is also going to be the safety net. So if the project doesn't get the funding um, and doesn't get to that end goal uh, the geocaching will be the direction the um, the project will take out at that point um, and that safety net is so important um, because otherwise you'll go crazy because at what point uh, can you let go um, and you know when you're as passionate about this as I am it's incredibly difficult to let go of something and so I needed to have a safety net a point where uh, I think it was called the pivot point or something like that, where you literally can say, do you know what, if I got to this and it's not going to go further, that's okay. You know, you've given everything at that point. Um, so that was the geocaching side. The other one was the, uh, the play by mail. So one of the big reasons we wanted to have play by mail is that we wanted to make the world feel you know, real. Um, with vampires from all over the place, you know, interacting with our live players. But we wanted to give them something in the game that made them feel incredibly valued um, because otherwise it's just like a lip service and we didn't want that we wanted it to be I'm sorry I keep on saying we I didn't want that I wanted it to be so um, you know that they felt that they were making big changes in the game and that's why we, we've created that's why I'm creating this system for them so they can um, you know have an impact on the game be involved in it um, and also one of the reasons why we wanted to do Playboy Mail was so that we could have um, uh, like a, a different form of funding in the project because if you base all of your <coughs> uh, income off of uh, live players that player base will fluctuate drastically depending on um, when people are in the area or if they move or um, you know things like that it basically it's, it's down to the whims of people actually turning up at your game whilst international or the play by mail because anybody around the world can play it your player base is limitless which means if you that's why we're putting a small fee on it so that would be a, um, a kind of like safety net income for the game it comes from our international players um, the fee is drastically reduced because of the amount of um, gain they're getting for their money um, so the live players get a lot more you know you're going to be getting 
fancy venues and costumes and props and all kinds of stuff. So you can't, I can't expect the international players to pay for all of that. But what they can help pay for is the insurances, the um, upkeep of the website, advertisement, all of these things that will mount up eventually the cost of it. So that's one of the reasons we went for that as well is that it's because we wanted to make the game feel different and also because it was a financial thing as well. Now we've got the live game. So the live game is going to be different. Um, we're looking to make it more as a LARP like you would see. Um, it's not like a club, it's more of an actual LARP system. So you would expect to play this like you would do um, Empire or Wasteland um, and other games like that. You know, It's not gonna be a massive LARP like Empire, but you know, it's gonna be on that kind of scale, so you're going to expect props, you're going to expect NPCs with costumes and really nice venues and um, sounds and we're looking to do a hire in um, some bands for some of the nights and stuff like that, so there's some entertainment. Um, all of these things, you know, they cost money. Um, and that's why we, we looked at having this, um, you know, fee for our players of about £120, £100 for the year and that gets you six games, possibility of 12 if you want to go and infiltrate the other courts uh, and we thought that was a reasonable amount, um, you know, for what you're getting for your money um, and that money will then allow us to basically go, right, these are all the venues we want, now we can pay for those venues because if you have it in the back room of a pub, it costs you £20, £30 a night and that's fine. But if you want to have it in a, you know, in an old Victorian building or something like that, you, you've got to pay more for it, and that's the thing. That's why the cost is higher, is because we're looking for the venues to make them nice. Um, and we also had the idea as well that um, basically there's charities in Southampton for the historical side of stuff that don't really get a lot of funding, and it was an idea to to kind of do this as a way to kind of give back um, because. One of the hardest things for me to accept is that it is it's a it's a non for profit organisation, um, which means, you know, we because we have because we are that it's very difficult. We have to literally be so open and honest about everything we're spending, um, and that's why you know at the end of the year we're going to you know publicise our you know, our sheets, our, our expenses, if you see what I mean, so everybody can see where the money's gone. Um, and also what money is left. And that money that's left then goes into paying for the next year's stuff, donations to the charities, uh, and that will all be dependent on the player base. You get a choice of where that money goes. Because um, at the end of the day, it's your money. Um, it's not mine. Um, I'm doing all this because it's not for the money for me. It's it's for the, you know, I wanted to create this. I wanted to give something back. I've been LARPing for, you know, 15 years and I've been a taker all that time. You know, I've gone to LARP events and I've paid my money and I've turned up on a field and I've enjoyed myself and had great memories. And I went, you know what? I want to give something back. I want to create something new. I want to give people new experiences. I want to draw in a new crowd of LARPers.